Hello! Our story begins inside of the learning center of the Jedi Temple. Anakin Skywalker was the newest face amongst the sea of Jedi who had spent their entire lives building friendships here inside the temple. Anakin didn't know a soul, and the instructors weren't the most welcoming. They acknowledged Anakin being new, and then moved on. It's not like there was a process for this. The Jedi wanted Anakin to feel included, but there hadn't been a Jedi older than the age of three brought into the Order for some years, so it wasn't exactly the most typical thing for them to deal with. Anakin found a seat towards the back of the class and got used to all the differences, whether it be the chilled rooms, which he never had on Tatooine, the tight Jedi robes, the peers around him, the peacefulness, or the extreme change in the overall vibe from Mos Espa to Coruscant. The city life was different. Not like Coruscant wasn't a city, but Mos Espa was a crime city. The Jedi Temple itself was like a tiny city within a larger city, so it was an extreme polar opposite from Tatooine. On Tatooine, crime and fighting were normal. Here, nothing was ever aggressive and everything was meant to be peaceful. Their room was seated in an open corridor, so people who were passing by could be seen if one were to slightly twist their head and look. Anakin wasn't really paying much attention anyways. There was a lot to take in, and with his new feelings in the Force being acknowledged, it was a bit overwhelming. For Anakin, it felt like all of his senses were beginning to get heightened. When he was younger, he knew he was special, but there were no words to describe how he knew how to do what he was able to do. It was just more or less him figuring out how to do things because he could feel that they had to be done in that particular way. Now he was a Jedi, surrounded by other people, and he could pick up on their essences. Not just those in the classroom, but people from all across the temple. It was overbearing. He could feel the peacefulness residing within Master Yoda. He could sense the anxiety coming from Obi-Wan. He could almost feel this billowing resentment from Pong Krell. All over the temple, so many beings, so many Jedi, and so much radiant force. It didn't stop at the temple, because as Mr. Qui-Gon said, the force lives in all beings. So, he could feel people outside the temple and throughout the city itself. It was a lot to take in, and he didn't have the knowledge to concentrate those feelings so it didn't overwhelm him. So he sat there in his seat, quietly suppressing a rising anxiety within himself. But all the cold sweats and twitching could be seen from a mile away, which it was seen and felt by a passerby, who was very unaware of this boy's presence. The Jedi who was walking by was one of the many Jedi who frequented this area of the temple. He, after all, was a caretaker of a very special young Jedi one that belonged to the same species as Master Yoda and Master Yaddle. This Jedi was going there at the moment, but he stopped and walked into the classroom and spoke to the teacher without making it audible for the other students to hear. He asked the name of the boy at the back of the class and requested to take him. The teacher was fine with it, assuming that Kalor and Beck had something planned. But Master Beck turned over and looked at Anakin and called him by name, asking him to come with him. Anakin scurried up to the front of the classroom and followed Kalor out of the room. The moment they were away from earshot or view from the classroom, Kellerin asked Anakin if he was feeling alright. Skywalker was a bit shaken, but he mustered the words to express some of what he was feeling. For the most part, it was a surreal dizziness. He could hardly walk or see straight, so Kellerin brought Anakin away from the area down to a quieter location within this section of the temple. Firstly, Kellerin asked if Anakin had been eating or not, and when it was revealed that he had been, he knew exactly what it was. Kellerin specialized in teaching younglings. It was one of the things that he was most proficient in, and while he was a very extremely talented duelist and a user of a lightsaber, his main area of focus was instruction. He knew that Anakin was struggling to focus on the Force as a whole, and so it was becoming too much for him to handle. Kellerin got Anakin's mind off of it by asking him some basic questions. By doing this, he got a firmer understanding of why he never saw Anakin around these halls. For Kellerin, he just assumed he was forgetting faces, because it did happen sometimes, but this was not that. It was just a 9 year old, now 10 years old, brought to the Jedi Temple. With Anakin now focused on something else, Keller was able to talk to Anakin about how he could focus on the Force, lower his range of focus to something specific. In this case, he suggested that he focus on Keller and himself. It was someone right in front of him and it would be easy. Keller suggested to have Anakin focus on himself because it was an outward focus. Once Anakin learned that, then he could bring it back to himself and begin to have some inward focus. The process wasn't hard or anything for Anakin to accomplish, but once he did, he felt a lot better. His head and mind weren't completely misconstrued, and he was able to simply enjoy having free thoughts again. Kellerin told Anakin that he could bring him back to class and he would be around if he needed anything. So that's what they did. Anakin went back to class and Kellerin went to where Grogu was to spend time with him and, well, be the caretaker. Over the coming weeks, Kellerin and Anakin would have a couple more interactions, mostly because Anakin was drawn to Kellerin. Aside from Obi-Wan, he didn't know anyone. The only other person that Anakin was at all familiar with was a girl in a class below his named Varys Ophi. 
but they didn't spend a lot of time in the same classes or areas of the temple together. Anakin didn't pay much attention during classes, but he picked up on some useful things. More or less, he became Keller and Shadow, which of course Keller and didn't mind. Anakin was nice to have around, but he always had a burning sensation to ask questions. Keller and always had the best answers for them. That was how their bond started, one simple act of kindness from Kellerim. Of course, Obi-Wan was around, but he was always studying so that he could be the master Anakin needed. There was a lot of anxiety and stress in this for Obi-Wan because he didn't want to mess it up, and he didn't want to fail. He knew he had a large reputation to live up to, especially considering Skywalker was supposed to be with Qui-Gon. Because Anakin was a couple years removed from becoming an actual Padawan, it gave time for him to actually develop a bond with Kellerim, which because of their bond, had Master Beck going to the High Council requesting that Anakin become his apprentice, which the Council, while not entirely on board with, reluctantly accepted. Though, they would suggest that Kellerin spend time with Kenobi as well. Master Beck had no issue with this. Obi-Wan was a fine young man, and he would enjoy his company. See, there was something special about Kellerin. He may have been a caretaker or an instructor, but he spoke a special language. His heart and soul was put into every interaction he had with anyone, especially younglings and Padawans. He made them better individuals by simply being himself. Kellerin had this radiant personality, booming with love and companionship. For younglings and Padawans especially, this connected with them. He was much younger than Terrace and Nube and Yoda, which made him more relatable, but he was also more fun than they were. This for Anakin had a huge effect on his development. Where Qui-Gon was originally his father figure, Kellerin immediately became that replacement, and the bond that Anakin had with Kellerin was shared with him. Because while Master Beck was a Jedi, he was able to give the compassion and warm feelings that only Qui-Gon could have been able to give. Obi-Wan wasn't at that age yet where he could radiate this wise Jedi Master thing, so for Anakin, Kellerin was the guy he wanted to impress. Like Qui-Gon, he didn't want to let him down, so whenever Anakin made a mistake or messed up, he always course corrected to ensure he wasn't doing anything wrong. This encouraged a lot of changes within Anakin's development. Kellerin, for instance, was really big on listening in class, so Anakin began to listen during class and become less hostile. Master Beck was also really big in humility, patience, and strength of mind, which for Anakin, because of his desire to impress the Jedi Master, meant he worked on this with dedication, always trying to reach a new level of growth to impress Master Beck. Believe it or not, this made Anakin more of a Jedi than he originally realized. His determination when he put his mind to something was unmoving, which allowed him to grow into a young Jedi unlike he could have ever imagined. This didn't make Anakin any less of an emotional being, it just made him more concentrated. Just like his early struggles with the Force, when he focused his mind on something, he was able to excel in it. By the time Anakin was old enough to become a Padawan, he was taken in by Master Beck. Obi-Wan was brought back to be a part of this process as well and the council by this point, after seeing Anakin's development transform from lots of reports of his behavior all the way to little to no hiccups, decided that it would be alright for Obi-Wan to be present and earn the rank of master through training Anakin alongside Kellerin. Obi-Wan was already dedicated and highly liked by the council, so this was a no-brainer on their part. He could assist Anakin's training and continue his career through the Jedi Order himself. It'd be a win-win, and Obi-Wan saw it as such as well. With the assistance and basically headlining training done by Kelleran, a lot of pressure was taken off of Obi-Wan. Though, there was one difference about this relationship of Master and Apprentice. A key reason Obi-Wan was brought in was because Kelleran was a caretaker of Grogu. He oversaw everything there was to see with Grogu. So in turn, this meant that Skywalker would have to spend time with Kenobi when Kelleran wasn't able to be with him. So, this wasn't really that big of a deal, or an issue at all for any of the parties. This would give Obi-Wan and Anakin bonding time as well. Though for Skywalker, he became very close with Grogu and saw the young Force wielder almost like his own responsibility. The reason this fell on Kaloran is because of Master Yaddle's disappearance. There was still no confirmed death for her, and she was originally supposed to take up the mantle of Grogu's training, especially once Kaloran began training Anakin at least. Nothing overall would change from any of their regiments. The biggest difference essentially would be Anakin being in classes. Aside from that, Everyone was basically doing the same thing. Because of Kellerin's responsibility to Grogu, they couldn't leave Coruscant for extended periods of time. Something peculiar did happen once Skywalker became a Padawan. The Supreme Chancellor of the Galactic Republic requested that he come along on a mission of some sort. Typically, the Jedi were okay with following the request of the Chancellor, and while Obi-Wan okayed it, Kellerin did not. He told Anakin that there was no need to involve themselves with the Chancellor. This wasn't at all because Kellerin had anything bad to assume about Palpatine. It was just more or less he didn't want Anakin around the Chancellor by himself or any other politicians by himself until he was a knight. 
the whole asking for a pattern was kind of weird in Kellerin's eyes, so Obion was sent instead, which for Obion was absolutely glorious, and he loved it so much. He hated every moment of it. Anakin didn't know about any of this at all, and if he did, he likely wouldn't care all that much either. There was no reason for him to care for the Chancellor aside from the remark he made on Naboo almost four years ago. Something about career and great interest. Who knows? Who cares? While well, Obi-Wan was off with Palpatine on their grand adventure, Anakin and Kelleran were playing with lightsabers. Kelleran, as a Padawan, was referred to by his peers as the Sabered Hand. He was extremely talented with the blade, and while he typically used one lightsaber, he was highly proficient in two saber form. Anakin was eager to learn about that, but as Beck suggested, it would take time before he could even use two lightsabers at the same time, which was fine. Anakin by this point adopted a green lightsaber, as it fit his personality a little bit more, and he followed Kelleran's instruction with the blade. As eager as Anakin was to get into lightsaber training with his master, his alert didn't really foster when he was put to practice. Over the years, his interests shifted, and while he wasn't typically the Jedi enthusiast, he was much more interested in the intellectual activities of the Jedi, which is something that Kelleran helped him with. A lot of this came from a bond that grew between Anakin and Grogu. At this point, Grogu didn't speak, but both Anakin and him spoke the same language. It was like they were brothers, and so Kelleran just allowed it to foster. A lot of the teaching that Kelleran displayed was fostering Anakin's growth as an individual. It wasn't really much more than guidance. For Kelleran, it was again the difference between brotherhood and fatherhood, in essence. Anakin would have seen Obi-Wan more as an equal, sometimes referring to him as a brother, but other times as a father. But with Kelleran, it was consistent. Also, if Obi-Wan was instructing alone, without any interference from Kelleran, Anakin would have been as rigid as he was the day he arrived in the temple, which would have been hard to work with initially. Most of the missions they took off-world were rather diplomatic. Obi-Wan was earning the recognition as a master of diplomacy, even though he wasn't fully a master at this point. For Anakin, it meant that most of his interactions weren't action-oriented, which for him was perfectly fine. He wasn't as interested in chasing it as much anymore. The group of Jedi typically moved together, Kaloran and Obi-Wan on point with Grogu and Anakin following behind. As Anakin grew older and the tension in the galaxy increased, Skywalker found himself closer to the Jedi than ever before. He didn't typically interact with the Council, but he found himself closer to Obi-Wan, Grogu, and Kelleran. In 22 BBY, Anakin would be put up for a mission that would be passed over to Obi-Wan. Kelleran and Anakin were preparing for a mission to Ryloth when the Chancellor requested that he watch over Padme Amidala after she was almost assassinated on Coruscant, though this task was passed over to Obi-Wan, who readily accepted it due to having not seen his friend in a long time. During their mission to Ryloth, Anakin began having terrible nightmares, which would lead Anakin to requesting that they leave Ryloth for Tatooine. Master Beck was surprised by this incessant need to leave, but once he heard the nature of the dream, he immediately picked up and left. What they were doing on Ryloth was quickly resolved anyways, and so it wasn't that big of a deal for them to just leave. Through a series of circumstances, Anakin and Kelleran would land themselves at the Lars homestead to learn that Shmi was taken by the Tusken Raiders. Kelleran could feel something he never felt from Anakin before. It was pure darkness. There was a powerful darkness that sat in his student that he never noticed. Sensing it, he decided to go with Anakin to retrieve his mother. Through several hours, they would eventually arrive at a Tusken camp under the cover of night. The two Jedi quietly entered the camp and found Shmi tied to a post. She was very badly injured, lots of bruising and cuts across her body. She clearly had been starved to some degree. Kelleran felt an evil lurking within the student, something that could do so much worse than he could ever imagine. As Shmi lay dying in her son's arms, Kelleran told Anakin to focus on the moment. They had to work quickly. Kelleran was one of the few teachers inside the temple that continued to use powers such as Force Heal. Due to him wearing the crest of the High Republic, Kelleran had family members inside the Jedi Order for generations. He was the end of a long line, which is why he wore such robes. The knowledge of the Force Heal was inside of the restricted section of the temple, but Kelleran learned it from one of his uncles. He placed his hand on Shmi's shoulder and then his other hand on Anakin's shoulder. Kelleran told Anakin to feel the Force, let it flow from him into his mother. Anakin tried to beg the question, but he was silenced. As they focused on the Force, Anakin could feel his body draining to an extent. But when he opened his eyes, his mother was breathing healthily, and the cuts and bruises had dissipated. Anakin asked what that was, as Kelleran shook his head and pressed his finger to his lips. A Tusken Raider was coming in. Anakin prepared to launch a lightsaber into this rabid face, but it was prevented. Kelleran quickly got up and used the force to sedate the Tusken Raider and place her gently on the ground. Anakin and Shmi got out the back side of the tent and escaped into the distance. When they arrived in the morning, the family was shocked to see Shmi alright. She was a bit dehydrated and hungry, but she would live. Kelleran would stay with Anakin on Tatooine for another week or so. 
Throughout this time, Master Beck would enforce that Anakin work on continuing coming to peace. They had a couple of deep conversations and Anakin was taught about not giving into his anger and having a better control over his emotions. In these conversations, Kelleran apologized for not having seen it earlier, and recognizing that while it was Anakin's emotions, that he as a teacher wished he could have assisted him through it earlier. In this, Master Beck was able to make Anakin take accountability for his own emotions and what they almost made him do, but also show him that his master was in it with him. While they were restructuring their bond once more, a massive battle broke out on the planet of Rodia. Without a battle of Genosis, the Republic was blindsided. The senator from Rodia, along with the rest of the planet's government, showed no interest in joining the Confederacy, and then they were smacked in the side of the head. Droid forces rained down and brought war to the planet. The Republic was able to respond, but this was just the beginning of the war. Anakin, who was still a Padawan, was brought back to Coruscant after giving his love to his mother and saying goodbye. Because Anakin was still a Padawan, he was kept inside the temple. On the other hand, Obi-Wan was sent out to be a warrior on the front lines. Kelleran believed there was much more work to be done with Skywalker, and while Anakin could have seen this as holding him back, he didn't. At this point, there wasn't really much that Kelleran could do wrong. He was a father figure to Anakin, and he just saved his mother's life. Not really more he could do than that. Because of a lack of connection between Anakin and Palpatine, as well as Anakin in the war effort, he was able to mitigate his growth in the dark side, and completely diminish it. For the Dark Lord of the Sith, he could deal with this. Of course, he thought Skywalker would be the perfect apprentice, but if not, he needed to work around it. Palpatine knew the Force. He understood that no matter what, the Force would try and put someone into a place of equal power to defeat him. This of course was Anakin. If he couldn't turn him, then he couldn't kill him either. Because the Force would just bring back something equal in strength or greater in power. So he began to concoct an idea. And the plan was a simple plan. Bomb the Jedi Temple. Not as simple as it sounded, but you know, the thought. If he could have the temple bombed in a location that Skywalker was in, he could sever his limbs and hopefully reduce him to a comatose state of existence. He would still be alive, but he wouldn't be able to stand up against him. It would allow Palpatine to use Dooku for maintaining control, and then he could use Skywalker for his cloning projects. Win-win. Bombing the temple wasn't as easy as it sounds. Until in the middle of the war, it was bombed. This really irked Palpatine because the bomb that was set off by Barriss Ophi completely threw off his plans and threw them away. Barriss was convicted of the crime and sentenced by the Republic to death. Because Ahsoka was Kenobi's student at this time, she would not be convicted of the crime, being that she was on the planet with Obi-Wan during the time of the explosion. Anakin, on the other hand, was rattled by this, but through his training, he didn't have resentment for Barriss or her actions. He simply learned how to let it go. By the time Anakin became a knight, it was too late. The Council made their move on the Senate, and the Order paid dearly for it. In an action led by Grandmaster Yoda, the Jedi moved on the Senate to take control. Palpatine was ready, and deployed Order 66. This had a majority of the Council wiped out from the get-go. Yoda, Sacy Tin, Kit Fisto, Agen Kolar, Coleman Kaj, Opa Rancisis, Shock T were all killed. Mace Windu barely survived, and he only did because of Yoda. With Kiari Mundi, Depa Balaba, and Plo Koon, and Obi-Wan off-world, they'd be in for a surprise of their own. Obi-Wan and Ahsoka were engaged on Utapau, Obi-Wan fighting with Grievous and Ahsoka on their front lines. When Order 66 came through, they were both nearly killed. Obi-Wan used Grievous as a body shield, and Ahsoka being thin enough to slip into a ventilation shaft were able to survive. Though the real chaos ensued on Coruscant. Clones marched on the Jedi Temple, and without a force user leading them on their march of terror, the Jedi began the defense on the temple. Syndralic and his temple guard would, despite the betrayal of the future Grand Inquisitor, be able to hold off the temple long enough to begin an evacuation. Though due to the sheer number of clones present, especially with no siege of Mandalore, the clones would break through the front gates of the Jedi Temple. This would have Anakin fending off younglings while using two lightsabers. His former master would be leading the younglings and Padawans away from the front lines to an escape route. It was a very intense situation, and it was the most action Anakin saw throughout the duration of the Clone Wars. Though because of his practice and hard work over the years, he was able to adequately defend a class of younglings after their master was killed by a number of clone troopers. The general consensus in the temple was that it was lost, and they had to retreat to ensure the order survived. Anakin with Syndralic and the remaining temple guards behind him would ferry out the backside of the temple into the streets of Coruscant. Instead of abandoning the planet, the Jedi would split up into different groupings. Anakin took the class he was with, and they entered an abandoned building on the surface level of the planet. This process was repeated with Jedi Masters and Knights alike. The Jedi were able to continue communicating with each other about what had happened, and all Anakin could do was hope that his friend Obi-Wan and his apprentice survived whatever it was that was happening. Over the coming hours, it would be revealed that Mace Windu survived, 
but he was very badly injured by the fight. The location of the abandoned building that Skywalker was in was very close to the Senate building and the Republic Executive building. Anakin, while doing lookout, noticed Mace Windu wandering around with a heavy limp and an aimless look. Anakin got out and brought him into the building and asked what had happened to him. He was so ashamed. He said they went into the Republic Executive building to arrest Palpatine, but he was ready. There were so many clones, and they weren't visible until the order came down and they began to fire away. The Jedi weren't enough and they were surrounded. Yoda being the Grand Master tried to keep everyone safe, but before he knew it, his peers were dropping around him. Windu carried a wounded Sacy Tin to the edge and before they could escape, Windu was shot in the lower back and fell. Tin defended Windu with all of his life until he was the only survivor. Windu leaned against the wall in the abandoned building and told Anakin the Sith were stronger than anyone initially believed. Anakin got down by Windu's side and prepared to give him a force heal, but Windu shook his head. He told Skywalker they needed to keep his strength. If the clones or the Sith came, he had to be ready. Mace pulled out his blade from his belt and placed it into Anakin's hand. He looked down at it and examined it for a moment. When he looked up, Mace nodded his head. Anakin was at a loss. Nothing could have ever prepared him for this moment. How could he have been prepared for it? What should he do? How many Jedi died? How many survived? What could they do? He pondered for so long. The younglings eventually fell asleep and Windu with a back to injection was sleeping as well. With two lightsabers, Anakin thought about what to do and decided that despite his history of not making rash decisions, that he would make one right now. Anakin snuck out of the abandoned building and moved quietly into the streets. He looked up and saw the lights shining off of the Republic Executive Building. It wasn't far from the Senate. Skywalker got up and made his way there, leaping across buildings and keeping off the street levels before finding himself a speeder and launching it into the air and flying into the highly secured castle. When he landed, he crashed it into another vessel to get the attention of the clones and escape from them as they were distracted. With the clones checking out the nature of the wreckage, Anakin ran past a number of discarded bodies all across the floors. He saw one after another, Jedi. The sights were horrific. Anakin noted that there was a Jedi Master missing from the sponge. He continued when he heard the cackle of an evil laugh. Anakin's legs carried him faster than he could have ever done before. He slid around the corner into the chamber of the Chancellor, a man who had never befriended him, just a career politician with a scaly face. Anakin could see a light beaming from the room, and when he entered, he saw Palpatine standing over a chained up Yoda. The Jedi Grand Master was on the verge of death. Mace must have not seen it correctly. Something was odd. He would have survived the encounter, though he wouldn't survive for much longer. Sidious stopped what he was doing and turned over slowly and looked at Skywalker. Anakin had no intention of letting Sidious kill Yoda, and with the ignition of two lightsabers, Sidious turned around with a heinous glare. Yoda tried calling out to Anakin to tell him to get as far away as possible. Yoda knew what Anakin did not, that despite his skill with a blade, Sidious would be far too powerful for him to handle at this point in his career. Sidious didn't care. His weapon ignited, and the two duelists moved around the room, not saying a word, simply looking at each other, waiting for the other to make the first move that would set this battle off. Anakin pulled his blades around and spun them at his wrists, so he blasted forward with the speed of ferocity. They connected, and Anakin defended himself adequately. Thanks to the teachings of his master, he'd be prepared to fight this monster. Because of Kelleran's influence, Skywalker'd spar with a number of Jedi Masters and a few council members as well. He was ready for this fight. Their blades clashed, illuminating the room in amethyst, crimson, and emerald. Anakin was extremely comfortable in the two lightsaber style. He even used Mace's lightsaber almost as a showdown, and what was far too long to use as one, it sufficed. Anakin twisted the weapons around, catching even cities off guard. But the Dark Lord wasn't going to just let this boy ruin everything he built up to for this moment. Anakin was astonished at the Sith Lord's speed, and he did everything he could to avoid being defeated by him. Anakin was thrown into a backpedal and was knocked off his feet by Sidious. He fell back onto a table situated behind him. In all of his glory, Palpatine prepared to put Skywalker into a life of torture. He wouldn't kill Anakin, he'd make him suffer though. Before Sidious's blades could hit its final destination, Anakin looked down and saw a fractured Yoda standing with his blade in front of Sidious, blocking a strike that would have severed both of Anakin's legs. Skywalker saw the opportunity before him and launched himself to his feet, igniting the weapons again. Sidious was quick bouncing back and igniting his second lightsaber to block Anakin. Victory was in his grasp. He couldn't forfeit this to anyone. Yoda fell to the ground. The pain he was in was too much for him to stand anymore. This left Skywalker and Sidious to toil with each other. Four blades, two duelists, and only one victor. The lightning speed between the two of them was only matched by the intensity between the glares they gave each other. Anakin refused to give up. He wouldn't allow Sidious to come out on top. He stumbled back and as he did, a chair slid across the room, blasting Sidious in the back, clipping away at his heel all the way up to the back of his knee. It was just enough to catch him off guard. Anakin sliced through his wrist and ripped his blades across Sidious' chest. Before he could relax, a number of clones came into the room. 
Anakin got to work quickly, defending himself by deflecting blaster shots into the clones. When he got a clear opening, he ran over to Yoda and scooped him up before making a great escape into the night. Yoda would die in Anakin's arms on the way back down, and when Windu woke up in the morning, everything was different. Anakin had given his weapon back to him, but something was off. Something changed within Anakin. Having been so absent from death for the majority of his life, he felt what it meant to take life from someone, and it frightened him quite a bit. Even if it was the most vile man in the galaxy, Anakin didn't like the prospect of taking someone's life. He was proud to have defeated the Sith Lord though. It was a weird bind. Regardless of that, thanks to the Bacta injection, Mace was feeling much better. The Jedi had to retreat though, they needed to regather and escape. Thanks to the standoff at the Jedi Temple, about 5,000 Jedi still remained. It was still a terrible loss, but it could have been so much worse. Without Palpatine, Dooku immediately became the head of state. He could and would take control over the Republic. However, that plan would not bode well for him. Despite the public believing the Jedi were actively trying to overthrow the Republic, their disdain for Dooku was much higher. It also didn't help that for Dooku, the dark side was eating away at his body from the inside out. And despite the fact he survived the war and the Battle of Coruscant, his body would give out not more than a month after Palpatine's death. The Jedi had, by this point, relocated to Ilum to have refuge. There was an old temple located close to the Kyber Caverns that every youngling went to. Anakin's accomplishments as a knight had him brought to the High Council by Windu. Their relationship wasn't too rocky due to his trust for Anakin, and Anakin's lack of disobedience over the years. The choice seemed obvious, and it was supported by other surviving Jedi. Thanks to the timing of Order 66, Kenobi was joined by Depa Balaba, Kirimundi, and Plo Koon, the only other survivors from the High Council. The threat of Maul still exists on Mandalore, but a revolution led by Bo-Katan would have him destroying the rest of their floundering society. The Republic, after pinning the Separatist Council down on Ord Mantell and forcing them into a surrender, would have peace. The pirate groups wouldn't have much longevity after the rise of Chancellor Organa. Amidala, Chuchi, and Mothma would inspire a wave of change within the Republic, though this change would take decades of work to complete. Inside the Jedi Order, based out of Ilum, Skywalker would join Kaloran as a caretaker of Grogu. While he had his seat on the High Council, he would be allowed to have such a position with Grogu. A lot of it came from the bond that existed before anything happened. But for Anakin, he desired to be a caretaker, as he believed he could make good use of Yoda's sacrifice, which did save his life. Because of Anakin's actions in the temple during Order 66, an entire generation of Jedi would be preserved, and be allowed to grow into the future of the Jedi Order. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our story. Again, special thanks to Galvin Gaming, Tristan, Darth Revan, Pimp Daddy Bane, The Last Jedi, Apollo, Eternal, Padawan, Jedi Sloth, Mr. Yeet Gamer, Mad Man Studios, Anakin003, Lemon Knight, Rex the Wolf, The Man with Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting the channel. Smash the like button. If you want to support me in other ways, go check out the Patreon. Let's talk about a story real quick. Now, we don't know a whole lot about Keller and Beck. There is a Wikipedia page for him, and there's not a lot of information. The Sabered Hand, that is something from that page so shout out to them, but I based a lot of Kelleran off of Ahmed Best, and I think that's what they were going for in The Mandalorian Season 3 when he showed up. I think Kelleran would just be based off of Ahmed Best, and so I put a lot of Ahmed into this character as he would have done so if he had more you know, time to develop the character on screen. And so I wanted Ahmed's character, or Kelleran that is, to feel like Ahmed. And that was that was a very pivotal thing for, for this story, is to be based around Ahmed. Um, and, and, and a lot of that's inspired from the interviews of Ahmed talking about what he put into Jar Jar and how much love and compassion he put into that, that character. And so I just took that and put it into Kelleran as I'm sure Ahmed would do, um, given the opportunity. Otherwise, I don't think Kelleran would actually force Anakin away from being emotional. I think Anakin would just find him as a father figure. I think that's really the, the key difference there, is that Anakin sees Kelleran like he would see Qui-Gon which is an absolute father figure, and I don't think he'd want to disappoint that father figure. I think I think Anakin would be like really, really anal about trying to not disappoint him. And so in doing so, I believe he would become really more Jedi-like unintentionally, and therefore leading to Mace Windu having a lot more trust for him. That was the puppy. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. I love you all. Spread the love. And always remember, my friends, may the Force be with you.